All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to your brethren, laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and in charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Coming to do another quick lesson to the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, it be edifying. And uh, this video is going to be on the um, recent Purge movie. It was the Forever Purge. Okay. Um, I saw the movie last night. And uh, I'm just uh, bring out some precepts on it because uh, the movie was very prophetic. Okay. As to the future of America okay it was also uh, spiritual in a sense of uh, the northern kingdom all right rising back up or right, Israel in general rising back up okay against Esau Edom okay and um, yeah it, it was a pretty good movie uh, I would recommend anybody hearing the truth to, to watch it if you haven't. It was a very prophetic movie. It gives you a preview of just some of the things that's going to come to pass here in America. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the book of Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. It says, Woe to the world. And them that dwell therein. Okay. Woe means destruction. So destruction to the world. And those that dwell therein. It says for the sword and their destruction. Draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another. And swords in their hands. So there's going to be uprisings. There's going to be people. Okay. Fighting against each other okay um now the modern day sword is would be what your guns okay which guns uh for the past couple years ever since the pandemic started all right was a major increase in gun sales okay so a lot of people are strapped up and uh you know this country got more guns than they got people man okay so a lot of people are armed up okay it says for there shall be a sedition among men what's the sedition okay is when the people go up against their own government all right which you see you saw that in the movie which you're starting to see in real life going against these mandates Okay, a lot of these people are not fucking with the mandates. Okay, especially these uh, um, prideful Americans that uh, really believe in, you know, the Second Amendment, their right to bear arms and, you know, their freedom and liberty and things like that. All right, those people are going to rise up, man. All right, and many other people. It says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not reward, regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall, shall stand in their power. All right. And this is perfectly uh, shown in the movie. Okay. In all the movies of the Purge movies, really. Okay. It says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able which is what you see going on today now you gotta have a vaccine pass vaccine card all right to go here go there and you know you know it's eventually gonna get more strict and it's eventually gonna uh come to pass where that's where you're gonna need to do anything to live in this society and then we know based on biblical prophecy that that goes in to the MOTB. Alright. Revelation 13 
and 16, all right, which is um, based off what we see, the signs of the times, it's not too far away, man. Okay, it says, uh, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So what? Well, there's going to be a famine. Right, there's going to be a food, a famine of food. There's going to be a famine of the word of God. Okay. And all of this chaos is going to happen. Quickly, man. Out of nowhere. Alright, it says the day of the Lord is going to be as a thief in the night. So, nobody knows when a thief is going to attack or rob and break into your house. Right? Unless you know that thief is going to come that night. You know, you're going to be prepared. Or you're going to wait for him. Alright, that's why you got the children of light and the children that dwell in the darkness. Alright, because we're not the children of uh, the darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. Alright, we're on our watch. Okay, we're watching for the signs. Alright, we're on our watchtower seeing what's going on. Alright, and based on what we see, we can determine how close we are. And we're closer than we've ever been. Alright. It says. Uh, our salvation is nearer. Than when we have believed. Okay. Um, Alright. So that was it on that. Um, here's uh, Jeremiah 30. I'm going to start at verse 6. It says. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Right, so men don't have babies, men don't bring forth child. Alright, so the reason all these men are got their hands in their loins, alright, and their faces pale. Alright, it's because of the time of Jacob's trouble. Alright, this is verse 7. The loss for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Alright, Daniel's 12 and 1. It goes into um, Jacob's trouble as well. Alright, how it's going to be a time like no other that has ever been before the face of the earth in all of its history, man. Alright. Worse than 70 AD, alright, when the abomination that make it desolate, alright, the desolation of the temple, all of our captivities when we came here in uh, ships as bond men and bond women, alright, it's gonna be worse than that, it's gonna be worse than World War Two. it's gonna be worse than all these times okay and if you don't have the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shai if you don't have that hedge or that mark in Ezekiel 9 and 4 alright which that word mark is the wa which means exemption from judgment okay let's go ahead and grab that In Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4 it says and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof and who's doing that who's sighing and crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof all right that's the prophets, all right, the sincere 
the true worshippers of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai that go to the highways and byways, week in and week out, prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom. Okay. They're the ones that sigh and that cry for the abominations that be done in the earth. Okay. Now that word mark here in verse 4 goes to the Hebrew word to wah, which, uh, like I mentioned before, all right, means an exemption from judgment. All right, this is a different mark from the book of Revelation 13 and 16. All right, that's the mark of the beast. You have a mark of the beast, you have the mark of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, one's to exemption from judgment, and one is for judgment. Okay, and those people that took the, the, uh, the Vanessa are, are most likely going to take that. RFID chip, man. Okay, it says, uh, verse 5, And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man whom upon whom is the mark or the walk. And begin at my sanctuary, then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay, so judgment is going to begin in the house of Israel. And then uh, it also showed you the the idolatry of Israel, especially the Northern King. All right, in that movie. All right, that's why a lot of our people are gonna die, man, because of their idolatry, which was. Uh, the what made us fall away in the first place okay that's why in the book of Jeremiah it says uh, uh, lift not up a prayer for these people for as the number of thy cities uh, were thy gods alright so that's the heavy idolatry of the northern kingdom Israel in general all Israel in general all right, but Northern Kingdom, uh, they're heavy into that idolatry. All right, so a lot of them are going to die, man. Okay. Um, so I got here as well in the book of uh, Genesis 49 and verse 19, because in the movie, you also saw Gad in there okay and Gad in the scriptures here in, in this prophecy all right has yet to come to pass but the prophecy is that uh, let me just read it Genesis 49 and 19 Gad a troop shall overcome him but he shall overcome at the last so what happened to Gad all right his land got taken over got stolen okay he got shoved into reservation camps and now he saw Edom dwells carelessly, deliciously, delicately. Okay, like if um this is his, right? And you saw that in that movie. Alright, but the prophecy is that Gad at the end of the day will overcome Esau Edom, the troop that overcame him. All right, and all, all Israel in general, because you know he got to pay for being the main one that has touched the apple of the Lord's eye. Okay, and he touched all the tri all the tribes. Okay, this is a uh, Psalms one forty nine. I'm gonna start at verse five. It says, "Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing a." Aloud upon their beds, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. In their hand, right? So, who are the saints? All right, Psalms 15 5 it says, uh, Gather my saints together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. All right, who made sacrifice with the Most High? The Israelites. So, the Israelites are the saints, all right, and they're uh, praising the Most High. And having a two-edged sword 
in their hand. For what? This is to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. So this is the judgment that's written. Okay, this is going to come to pass. And Esau Edom knows that, man. That's that's why it's like damn near in all the movies. Alright, he tells on himself. Alright, they're scared. They're shaking in their boots, man. We shouldn't be scared or shaking in our boots because they're the ones that has this judgment written, not us. Was written for us, the hopeful elect, is that we get delivered and saved out of this place. Now, there's going to be some of us that are going to have to be martyrs for the name of Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Okay. But there's going to be some that shall not taste of death. Okay. And those that do taste of death, they're going to be the first ones risen. And uh, with Yahweh Shai. Okay. So either way, it's, it's not. Uh, we're not going to lose, man. We're not going to lose. We got the victory on, on, on this one. All right. Esau, Edom, and these other nations are the ones that are going to take this out. Okay. So this is um, the book of Jeremiah 30 and verse 16. It says, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Alright, so every, all the things Esau, Edom, and these other nations did to us, we're going to do to them times two. And the things that they have done to us was really horrific, man. It was in, inhumane. Alright, some of the things you read about and see... It's just like, why Why would anybody do anything like this? You know, and they're going to get that times two. You know, it's going to be a, a heavy, heavy judgment, man. All right, but that's just the way it is, man. It's what's written. They got to pay for the things that they have done. They have to. The Most High and will not at all quit the wicked. He's not going to let the in, the wicked or the guilty escape without being punished. They're going to drink of that cup too. Because we drink of that cup. Alright. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 5. It says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. And also in this movie, you see, um, you see that you see the perpetual hatred that Esau has uh, on uh, the children of Israel. All right, that that movie shows you that. Okay, and how Esau Edom is gonna come. For the Israelites, man. Okay, it says, uh, verse 6, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Alright, so, he that lives by the sword shall die by the sword, man. It's that simple. Alright, Revelations 13, alright, 9 and 10. All right. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. All right. So that's the fate of Esau Edom. All right. And yeah, he's going to come with great wrath. He's going to come in like a flood. He's going to come in with, with his, uh, his, uh, his blessing, which is the sword. But at the end of the day... Well, we're going to eventually be delivered. We're eventually going to be saved. Okay. Just like um, during the time 
of uh, Haman and Israel. Haman had uh, wished and plotted against Israel that we all um, be killed. But at the end of the day, what was his lot? That he be he and his family be hanged on the gallows. All right. And at the end of the day, that's Esau Edom's destiny. He that uh, sets the trap and uh, cast out his net. Or is his own foot taken. Or he's going to be taken in the uh, devices that he has imagined against us. Okay. So we have nothing to fear. Esau, Edom, and these other nations are the ones that have to fear. Okay? Because they, they know this. They know they know biblical prophecy, man. They, they know who they are and what they've done and what they're trying to hide. But, hey, like it's, Job says that the deceived and the deceiver are his. Alright? That uh, they shall not be able to perform their enterprise. Alright? Um, so with that, man, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Lord willing, it was an edifying lesson. As always, all honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Until next time, I say Shalom. Well.